This is a Hatswing Petrura 3.0. And in this video, I'll be showing you how I built and designed my battery and charging system all around it. Like most people, I started looking at the e-propulsion and the Torquedo alternatives, which has everything built in, but the price was pretty eye-watering. The propulsion came in at about 30,000 kroners, or about 3,000 euros or dollars, give or take. That would have given me one kilowatt of usable power. So I figured I could do it cheaper. I just picked up a new engine from the post office. It's fairly heavy, but it seems to be packed all right. Seems to be the kill switch prop. Definitely some sort of composite, but feels pretty solid. Connectors. I can tell straight away all the weight is the brushless engine in the bottom. Looking at this online, I figured the shaft would be pretty fragile, but it doesn't feel like that at all. This is some sort of metal composite. So about a meter and a half, it clicks into place between forward and reverse. And it snaps into the upright position. So I'll be able to use it for my transom mount. It's actually an extra anode here. That's... There's the drive pin pre-installed, which means I got two spares. Yeah, can fill the engine. There's no slack. So I don't have a lithium battery yet. So I'm just gonna use my house lithium bank. Seems to be working. We're doing about a third to a quarter throttle right now. Just ordered a 100 amp 12 volt lithium battery. So I'm gonna start mounting the separate motor bank as soon as I get it. I'll be able to fit two batteries in here. I was hoping it'd be more, but yeah, it's not gonna work. Finally hold it all back. It wasn't the easiest load to carry, especially the panel. But I got it on my bike. Another blue smart charger. Battery cables, battery connectors, MC4 connectors, a blue smart charger. I just gotta put it all together and the fuse will arrive in a couple of days. <music> a slight setback because the shop I ordered the solar panels and the batteries and everything from they didn't have a 100 amp fuse I had to order that from a separate shop my tracking shows that it hasn't been moving for days now so what I'm gonna do today is test the cables on one of the batteries I'll go out in the fjord run it full throttle and just check that I don't get any heat or well nothing starts burning I've been going full throttle for the last uh, seven or eight minutes, running for 40 minutes total. So let's go downstairs and check the connections. All right. So battery connections, both cool to the touch. Uh, bring a flashlight so you guys can see. No heat whatsoever. So I'm gonna have to run this test one more time when I hook this one up to the fuse. And then I've also got another battery cable I made, which I'm gonna connect to a shunt. And I'll hook the shunt up to my chart plotter. Which will give me more than a guesstimate as to how much power I've got left. I finally got the final piece to the puzzle. I didn't get it from the shop that I ordered it from because that one was lost in transit. Luckily for me, my mom was passing through, driving up north to visit my brother, and uh, she brought this. Here's the scary part, connecting them. So first, I'm gonna check for the voltage, 13.95. So I'm just gonna YOLO it, famous last words. 
I've connected a fuse here, so hopefully won't be too many amps. And it didn't blow up. 13.83. 13.83. Don't recommend uh, doing it that way, because that was a 0 0.25 volt discrepancy. <laughs> yesterday that I've had an issue with overheating especially in the joints of the cables this cable that went from the main switch got a bend in it which was I mean it, it was just warm it wasn't super hot but I could see that it kept bending so what I've done now is I've made a shorter battery cable I'm gonna put the fuse here connecting to the circuit breaker then I'm gonna make a separate cable to attach their battery I couldn't really put a cable going from the outside and down there there's not enough space for a bend. I would just get the same result with a bad connection. So I'll ground away this whole part here. As you can see here, how it was. And it goes without saying that I don't recommend doing this. Because it's there for a reason. Because the screw isn't supposed to get contact with the cable. But it's not gonna be any contact between the screw and the cables. It's only 12 volts. But I'm gonna have to pay attention to it. Doing it like that, the cable will just have a nice little turn with no sharp bends. I had to alter my plan slightly because I couldn't get the screws with everything connected underneath here. So the poles had to be here on the inside, which isn't ideal. And I also ended up with the bend I wasn't supposed to have on this cable. I placed a couple of strips here to take the force off of the cable shoe. So it won't break, hopefully. I might actually redo this configuration later on, but it's all connected. And so, press the fuse, key's ready. I'm wearing safety glasses, so here goes nothing. Works. That's pretty sweet. I was looking forward to this. I've been living like this for the past month, and now it's been three weeks. Now the pros are obvious. I haven't had to spend any money on gasoline. Saved about a thousand kroners. That's a hundred dollars or euros. So that's a 20th of the price paid down already. The cons, however, the whole thing about being equivalent to three or four horsepower, this engine being 900 watts, that's not really true. But my reason for going electric wasn't to have a lot of power to go fast and really far and a charge. It was to have something that was reliable. Last year when I was using the Suzuki, I ended up motoring all day because it was such a hassle to get the thing started with a clogged carburetor and all. But with this engine, you just turn the throttle and it starts. You know, super easy. Do I recommend it? Yeah, if you have the time. If you're in a hurry, only sailing in the weekends, then electric is probably not for you. But for my use, right now, it's perfect. 